Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Zion Pi UV999 Pro, a handheld transceiver which covers at least three handbands that you can transmit and receive on. This radio also receives between 108 and 136 megahertz in AM, which means it has full airband support. But is it any good? We will also go through testing the RF power output on the two 1.25, 70 centimeter and PMR bands. We will also take a look to see if this radio has a clean output or is this radio fit for the trash with horrid harmonics. Now keep watching to find out. In the box, we get the usual accessories, a manual, an antenna, a battery, the radio itself and a belt clip. Now you may have noticed there was no desktop charger and the charge cable supplied is a USB to USB-C cable. So yet, this radio allows USB-C charging. So that's a plus one to the Zion Pi UV9999 Pro. And the supplied antenna supports from 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 470 megahertz. So outside of these frequencies, you're best with an alternative antenna. Although you won't be able to transmit outside of these frequencies, you may still want one dedicated for light airband. Now the battery is an interesting find with a label that states the capacity of 5,800 milliamp hour. Could that be true? Well, the size of the battery is definitely larger than we've seen on other radios in the past. As mentioned earlier, charging the battery is via a USB-C cable and that's via the USB-C socket on the battery itself. So if you have two batteries, you can charge one while still using the radio with another. The radio itself does feel like a nice solid radio, especially with the battery installed. The left side of the radio hosts three buttons, which at first glance looks like two PTT buttons and one function button, but it's not. The top larger button is the PTT and the two smaller buttons are function buttons, which can be programmed in software if required. They do come pre-programmed anyhow, and these activate the inbuilt broadcast radio receiver, the flashlight, or whatever function you assign them to. Now, the keypad is fairly standard with one key depression to change between VFO and then hold to change between memory and frequency entry. The right side of the radio hosts the speaker mic sockets, which of course also doubles up as the programming port, which I think we're pretty familiar with by now. On the top of the radio, we find the antenna connection, a programmable emergency button, a white LED, which acts as some kind of torch, a status LED, and of course, a rotary control, which can be used to turn the radio on and off and then adjust the volume. Now, turning on the UV999 Pro will reveal a nice crisp and clear black background screen. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking it looks familiar. Well, it is. Another Giant Pi radio that I have previously reviewed has pretty much the same screen. You may also think this radio is also sold as the Radtel RT470. Well, I would agree with you until I discovered something which I'll go through later. So maybe it's not the same radio, but we'll see. Going through the menus provides you with a nice description of each function. And if enabled, there's also a voice prompt, which can be changed between Chinese and English to help you understand each function. Or maybe you want to learn Chinese or the other way around. With a quick flick of a function button, you can listen to the broadcast FM pad if you've got bored of talking to others. It seems quite a popular feature these days to have broadcast FM receive capabilities built into handheld radios. Now, programming the radio is extremely easy due to the fact there's not an exaggerated amount of features or functions to configure. Now, I could not seem to locate software specifically for the Giant Pi UV999 Pro, but the closest I could find was the Radtel 470 software. Now, this appeared to work both with uploading, editing, and then downloading back to the radio. Now, something which I mentioned earlier about whether or not this radio is a Radtel 470 was put into doubt when I tried to use the latest version of Chirp. Selecting the Radtel RT470 within Chirp and then performing a read triggered an error message saying the radio had returned an unknown identification string. And at this point, the radio just rebooted itself. So maybe this radio is not a direct copy of the RT470. Who knows for sure? 
What I do know is that if you change the boot up start screen from voltage to picture, the JJCC logo is displayed. And after further research, it appears to be also a JJCC8810, which can have a Bluetooth option fitted. I couldn't see that for this model. After programming, we can select those new memories and the channel name is displayed on the screen. Although in my opinion, the channel name font should be a little larger. What do you think? Now, as mentioned earlier, this radio supports AM reception on the airband. Let's take a quick listen to hear how this sounds. So it clearly receives AM on the airband. But the start of each transmission, there's kind of some kind of AGC issue, which makes it sound a little bit distorted, almost like it's off frequency. Now let's take a listen to how this sounds on air. So using my SDR Play SDR receiver, I recorded my transmitted audio, and this is how it sounds. This is M0DQW, M0DQW, checking the audio on the Giant Pi 999 Pro. Uh, this is M0DQW, checking audio on the Giant Pi 999 Pro. Oh, and it's UV 999 Pro, just to be sure. M0DQW. With the radio hooked up to my power meter and a suitable dummy load, the 999 Pro emits just over 6 watts on 145.5 MHz, just over 4 watts on 435 MHz, just over 5 watts on 220 MHz, and just over 4 watts on the PMR band at 446. Now this is quite surprising and definitely one of the more powerful radios that we've tested on this channel. While it may be good to have a strong transmitted signal from a handheld device, it's also important to know if the radio you're using is also transmitting spurious signals, such as harmonics. So the first harmonic from the fundamental, i.e. the desired transmit frequency, is around double. This is normally the most strongest harmonic, and if the radio is any good, i.e. has decent bandpass filtering, then the harmonic will be at low level to avoid interference with other bands. At 145 MHz, we can see the first harmonic only a few dB away from the main transmission. Now, in my opinion, this is absolutely horrendous. Not sure if there's something wrong with this radio or how it's been designed. Now, just to make sure my analyzer is working, I connected up my GD88 transceiver, and this is the output. The first harmonic is not even registering at this power level and attenuation, so it looks like my gear is working okay. Up on 435 MHz with the 999 Pro, we see an even bigger mess with many spurious emissions and a harmonic of around 30 dB down from the fundamental. Better than the test on the 2 meter band, but still not great. Now at 220 MHz, the 1.25 handband, we see a harmonic drop of around 60 dB. So that's great. We have at least one band that has a fairly clean output. Although, look at that second harmonic, it looks suspiciously high. Now, to give you an example of what can happen in the real world with bad filtering and harmonics, this is the radio tuned to 145 MHz while my SDR is tuned to 290 MHz. Look at how strong and clear the signal is. Testing the first harmonic, testing the first harmonic, uh, 290 900. Wow, that's bad. For the next clip, I will perform the same test with my GD88. As you can see here, it's a lot lower. Now, harmonics are natural and will occur in most transmitters. There are acceptable levels which can be used, but in the case of the UV999 Pro, well, at least on 2 and 70, I wouldn't use this on air without extra filtering in line with the antenna. Anyway guys, that's the Giant Pi UV999 Pro. Slightly disappointing results, but maybe I've just got a dud. If you have this radio, then let us know down in the comments below if your radio acts the same as mine. 
Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.